Hello YouTube and welcome to my new unboxing and review video of the Intel Nook 8 i7 HVK, the new Hates Canyon. Let's get started with the unboxing. This is the Intel Nook box. The outside says unlocked performance. On the rear we have a I.O. view of the product and the list of all the features and the sides are pretty empty. So let's open it up. There are two stickers, one on each side. Cut them open, then you can open the box. On the inside, you will be greeted by the Nook itself, which is surrounded by a foam packaging. Underneath the foam packaging, we will find a cardboard cover, and underneath we will find all the accessories that come with the product. The first is the VESA 100 mount. Then we have the big power supply. Here we have the screws and the tools, as well as an Intel sticker. First off, we have the quick start guide for the Intel Nook. Then we have all the safety information and warranty information. A starter kit download voucher. And a small leaflet about the Intel Optane SSD. Last but not least, we have the power cord for the power supply. Now the box is empty, and I'd also like to point out the skull, which is engraved in the top foam cover. Pretty neat feature. Let's put these accessories aside and start unboxing the SSD from Intel. This is the Intel SSD 760P 512GB M2 AD with NVMe. This is more of a bulk packaging with only the SSD inside. Next up, we have the Corsair Ventions memory. This is a 16 GB kit made up of two 8 GB modules, DDR4 3000 with 1.2 volts. Again, these are just fairly simple packaged, only in a plastic cover, and we'll get to install them in the next scene. Let's start with the component installation for the Intel SSD and the Corsair Ventions memory. First of all, to open up the Nook, we need the Allen key, which is inside the small Ziploc bag. Let's remove the top protective cover so we can access these screws. These are fairly simple, just loosen them counterclockwise and put them aside for now. Now to access the inside, we just have to lift off the plastic cover. And in the next step, we have to remove the cable for the LEDs. Now there's one more screw that we have to loosen. This is a Phillips head. The tool was not supplied for this one, so you have to use your own tool. Again, we put this one aside, and now we're ready to remove the top part. Okay, here we have the two memory slots, and there are two SSD slots for M2. Okay, let's open the memory and install them. Please be careful to align the notch correctly, then insert them at an angle until they are fully inserted, and then gently push them down until you hear the click. Second module, again, make sure the notch is aligned, insert, and gently push down until you hear the click. Now both memory modules are installed. Next up is the SSD. We'll go ahead and install the M2 SSD in the slot next to the Wi-Fi. Install the SSD at an angle as well. And then you have to remove the screw at the end. Gently push down the SSD and reinstall the screw again. Now with all components installed, we have to reassemble the Nook. The first step will be to insert the LED cable through the opening. Keep in mind that most of the wiring should remain underneath the top cover. Now carefully reinsert the connector and ensure that it is fully pushed in. Make sure all the screws are aligned and reinsert the locking screw. Gently tighten with your Phillips screwdriver, but do not over tighten. Now that the cover is correctly installed, we'll place the plastic lid down and insert the screws. There are six screws in total. You have to tighten them clockwise, but do not over tighten them. 
As a small tip, it's easier if you push down the plastic with your hands and then tighten the screws with the Allen key. Now there's one more thing that I'd like to go over with, which is the installation of the VESA mount. The way this VESA mount works is you install two standoffs and then slide the VESA plate sideways in to lock it on the nook. Included in this small Ziploc bag, we have two standoffs that have to be screwed into the bottom of the nook. Now with both standoffs installed, we'll tighten them down with a Phillips screwdriver. Now we'll have to line the vase amount, make sure the up is facing up and then insert and slide over. It will be a little bit sticky due to the rubber standoffs, but it's now in place. Of course, install the vase amount on your display before sliding it onto the nook. To remove it, just slide it to the other side and it's off again. Here's a 360 degree view of the Nook with the front panel giving you a power button, an SD card reader, two USB, an HDMI, a USB-C and a headphone jack. There's nothing on the sides. And the rear is featuring an optical audio output, the power supply input, two Thunderbolt connectors, two mini display port connectors, two gigabit ethernet connectors, four USB connectors and another HDMI. And on this side, we also have the Kensington lock. Now, next up, I'd like to go over a few benchmarks, which show the performance of the Radeon Vega GPU and the new Core i7 8th generation processor. The first benchmark I'd like to go over with is Geekbench 4, which is a GPU compute and system performance benchmark. In single core mode, we've received a score of 5261. In multi-core, 17,600. And the GPU OpenCL score is 84,336. Next up is the selection of Unishin benchmarks, with the Heaven 4.0 being the oldest in Extreme, where we have received a score of 1,271 with 50.5 FPS. Next one is Valley 1.0 in Extreme HD, with a score of 1692 at 40.4 FPS. And the last one is the Superposition 1080p Extreme benchmark, which we scored at 1,815 points. We've also done the 3D Mark benchmarks, the older one being a 3D Mark 11 in performance preset, which scored a score of 13,119, and the later 3D Mark 13 Firestrike 1.1, which scored a total score of 8,494 points. Overall, I'm rating this product at four stars, with the main pros being a compact form factor, having a great performance for its size, and an excellent array of I.O. ports. However, on the downside, the Nook seems to be a bit noisy at full load and it features a pretty high price. Nonetheless, I think this is a great product and a very potent computer. Thank you for watching my video. Please feel free to leave any comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.